Welcome, Algebra Tourists. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to evaluate a 3x3 three three determinant using what's called the diagonal method. And you'll see why it's called that in a moment. Before I give you any specific examples, I'm going to give you the rule. And the rule is, if you have a 3x3 three three matrix, and you're going to use the diagonal method, you're going to want to copy over the first two columns over again, but you're, wanna, you're going to really want to watch the spacing and keep it consistent with the spacing that's already there. So look how far apart these, these variables are from each other. And then when you copy the rows over again, you want to maintain that. So I'm going to say ADG as I copy the first column over again. And then I'm going to do BEH. B, E, H. Okay, now to start the process in figuring out the determinant by hand, we start on the upper left, which is similar to a 2x2. Two two. And now what I'm going to do is project downward in a diagonal manner. Hence the name of the diagonal method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the product of each of these um, items along the diagonal. So the first one's going to be A times E times I. I don't know why I started with the A times E times I. Then I'm going to add to that the product of B, F, and G. B, F, and G. And then I'm going to add to that the product of C, D, and H. Okay. When I'm done with that, I'm going to subtract big minus here. And then what I'm going to subtract from that is the product of some more diagonals. This time though, starting with the lower left and going upward. So I'm going to set it up like this, like this, and finally like that. And now I think maybe you can understand why the spacing of these last two rows is really important. If you smush them together or you spread them out too much, it's going to be hard to make this diagonal. So the first diagonal going upward will be G times E times C. G times E times C, and then HFA, and finally IDB. So if you're doing this with a real problem, which we're going to do in a minute, you'd multiply all these numbers together and then add them up, and then multiply all these numbers together and add them up, and then subtract one result from the other. So let's work with a specific example right now to see how that's done. Okay. In example one, I'll start by rewriting the first two columns, again maintaining that spacing. Negative 3, 6, 1, and then 0, 5, 4. Now you have to be happy when there's a 0 in there, because what that means is when you go along the diagonal, that whole diagonal will get eliminated when the 0 is involved. So that's always good. So here's our first diagonal, our second. And finally, our third. So we'll start with uh, negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. The next one has that 0 in it, so that's nothing. But I just want to write that down to, to show that I'm accounting for the middle. And then the final one's going to be 36 times 4, which is 144. Now I'm going to subtract from that going up the other way. So the first product is 1 times 5 times 6, which is 30. And then I've got 4 times negative 2 times 3, which is 24. And the last diagonal also includes a 0, so that's going to be nothing at all. But I'll put 0 just to account for that space. All right, now to clean up what I have, uh, negative 30 plus 0 plus 144 is 114 minus, and then everything in the second set of parentheses is 54, and 114 minus 54 is 60. Okay, going to example two, I will start by writing over the first two columns, maintaining the good spacing. Starting on the upper left, okay, one times negative seven times negative three is 21. The next product is going to be 25 times 8. And the last one's going to be negative 108. Okay, the upward diagonals, a negative 70 
72, and 90. Okay, this is now the arithmetic here is a little bit more challenging. We have 221 minus 108. 221 minus 108. Minus. And this is going to be 2 plus 90, which is 92. So this is going to be uh, 113 minus 92. And that ends up being 21. Okay, so that's how you evaluate a 3x3 three three determinant manually using the diagonal method. I'm going to take a moment now and show you how to use the calculator to do these same problems. Let's just, I'll just do one of them because it's the same. Um, so let's pull that calculator up. At this time, if you have your calculator, it would probably be a good time to get it out. Okay, so I'm going to do example one. We'll turn the calculator on. We'll go to our matrix menu, which is going to be pressing the second, and then I believe it's three buttons below that. Its matrix is written um, above the button. And we want to edit matrix A. So I'm going to go over to the right. <clears throat> now I've got another matrix entered in there already, so I want to enter this new one. So it's already a three by three. If not, make it a three by three, and press enter to move from one thing to the next. And so now I've got to enter a negative three, enter. 0, enter, 6, enter. And now it's going to be 6, 5, negative 2. 6, enter, 5, enter, negative 2, enter. And then 1, 4, 2. 1, enter, 4, enter, 2, enter. I always like to take a moment and just make sure that what I typed in is what I actually needed. And it's looking pretty good. So now I'll go to the calculating screen. And I need to find the determinant of that matrix A. So I go to the matrix menu, math, option one is determinant, and you've got to direct the calculator which matrix to find the determinant of, which is matrix A. So back to the matrix menu, select A, and hopefully when we press enter, we will get an answer of 60. Nice. So this is how you determine a, um, <clears throat> this is how you evaluate a three by three determinant, both by hand and using the calculator. At this time, I, re I might recommend uh, trying example two using the calculator to make sure you can do it.